Okay, this is another video. I'm going to read some of Ken Carey Ward's, kind of where I left off in the last one. And play this while, let you see the orbs while I'm reading instead of the words this time. Life is now. Life exists only in the present moment of time, in the presence of God. Thoughts that are oriented toward the past and future serve only to restrict and limit the amount of animating current that is available to vitalize your expression. You have no idea how much energy will flow through you when you have proven your trustworthiness and cleared these obstructions from your circulatory system. Can you release the past and future-oriented conceptual structures that are preventing this from taking place? Are you willing to come with me to join with me in a journey of unimaginable adventure? Come, my friend, the door is open. Lay down your fear, lay down your reason, leave the past behind, and prepare yourself for transformation. There are preparatory steps as individuals approach the point where they are open to transformation. But the actual transformation is not a sequential process. It is not a complicated ritual. It can occur in the twinkling of an eye. It not only involves one step, one decision, one event. When it takes place, it is as easy as breathing, as simple as a smile. Suddenly, you just know, suddenly, you know on a level of certainty that precludes all knowledge. Your eyes clear and you see for the first time what lies beyond the prison wall. And you jump. You jump into the unknown. Alive, alert, aware for the first time of who you really are. When you are ready to make that leap, you will know there will be no other choice. Suddenly, you will realize that all your fears, all your problems, all your rational dilemmas were all just part of a dream, a fiction that you had been maintaining through your own stubborn effort. Identifying with the being behind all life, you realize that the particular form that you are conscious of projecting through at the moment is not really who you are. As you begin to see your body as an exquisite exploratory instrument designed for the expression of your spirit, you begin to relax. Your preoccupation with survival begins to fall away. It is not that the body becomes unimportant, but rather that a fundamental identity shift has taken place. You are not your body. You are not your thoughts. You are not what you feel, not your role or your experience. You are the spirit of life itself, dancing in the clay, delighting in the glorious opportunity of incarnation, exploring the realms of matter, blessing the earth and all therein. The psychological process that triggers this awareness takes place in the present moment. You must be there, fully present, to experience it. This is not difficult. Simply be aware of whatever you are doing. If you are slicing the bread, do not be thinking of your thirst. If you are listening to a friend, do not be thinking of what you are going to say next. If you are eating a meal, do not be thinking of what you are going to do when the meal is over. But show the earth the appreciation of your fullest attention. In whatever activity you engage, be there fully in consciousness also. This will draw you into the presence of God and quickly show you what areas of your life are most in need of adjustment. The question is not how much of the presence of God you can bring into your life, but how much of your life can you bring into the present. The presence of God is everywhere. You have only consciously to embrace it with your attention. Once you have learned to focus your attention in the present moment, you can begin to refer to your intuitive faculties for direction. These intuitive sources are your direct link with the totality of your being. Trust them. They will not fail you. 
They arise involuntarily from the depths of your being. Like the breath you breathe, they inform you instantly of all you need to know in any situation. They supply you with a readout based on the infallible wisdom of your Creator that tells you the optimum behavioral pattern available to you in each circumstance. They cannot help you in the future. They cannot help you in the past. But they can be your invaluable pilot in the present moment. It may be that following these intuitive impulses will break many of your previous behavioral patterns. But do not think twice. Let them fall away. Proceed with the faith of a child. It will be far better for you to break the patterns in your life that are not in harmony now, on your own, than to wait until the increasing vibrational intensity that is enveloping the Earth's atmosphere breaks them for you. The information you need is encoded in the structural makeup of every single cell in your body. Contact it there. The interval of hesitation that exists between your initial life impulse and its eventual implementation or rejection may seem like a little thing, but when you consider how many such intervals exist in the course of an average day and how much collective human energy is poured into these intervals, it is staggering. This is the opening through which your entire species is being drained of its very life substance. In order to do the work that is ahead, you cannot afford such waste. Your cultural conditioning has convinced you that withdrawal of attention from rational consideration of past, present, and future possibility would cripple you in your ability to carry out your responsibilities. In truth, it will free you to carry out your real responsibilities. Your responsibility is to be yourself, to express the essence of your innermost spirit, to express the Lord in form on earth. To do this, you must be in His presence. Consider all the various issues of your life in the brilliance of the living light that springs from His being. All that is unreal will no longer exist. Such an easy way to solve problems. At this time, your reason is too unwieldy, too premeded with ego values, too slow and open to manipulation to satisfactorily resolve our increasingly complex problems, be they personal or global. Look to the light of your soul, to the illumination of your own spirit or the answers, and allow whatever does not stand up in this light to dissolve back into the darkness from which it has come. If one day you find yourself suddenly waking up and if you had experienced the psychological process, but you sense that you are not yet firmly grounded in the new reality, lie low during the days of your centering. Do not use the powers that you have gained in ways that will draw attention. The time for action will come soon enough. You will know with a certainty when it does. In the meantime, do not intentionally restrict your spirit, but go about your business lightly with a minimum of personal involvement, keeping centered on the living spirit within. As you become secure and steady in your ability to maintain yourself in the presence of God, you will find supreme fulfillment in simply doing what is required of you in the moment. In this state of grace, your false identities will fall away and there will remain during the times of your information an individual identity much more flexible and much more functional than any you now embrace. This identity will not be an exclusive identity that feels separation from the rest of its kind, but a cooperative identity that understands its own uniqueness to be the mechanism through which it might serve the greater whole. Now, this next chapter, I'll read a part of it, since I'm only at nine minutes. Planetary Symphony In the fallen state of consciousness, each human being functions in disregard of the song of life that is going on in others. There is no harmony, no direction, no arrangement. 
You are like the random notes of an orchestra before the conductor unifies the instruments in symphony. The grand conductor is calling everyone to attention, calling now to remembrance of unity and purpose, reminding all that the time has come to stop tuning separate instruments and begin to accept the direction of one who understands the whole. As you begin to pay attention to the direction of the conductor within, you will begin to play to the rhythm of the planetary symphony, harmonizing with the others of your species and with all life. No longer will you think of yourself as being more or less important than anyone else. You will stop identifying with individual form and begin identifying with the collectivity of your being, the Spirit of Christ. Christ is the name that is given to man once he has awakened out of the shadow of matter. Christ is the name of the single, unified being that is the totality of collective human consciousness. Identification with Christ is the key to the time that lies before you. In the days to come, all that has kept you separate and apart shall explode in the release of, all, of your full potential. You will never again have any need to inflate yourself in imagined importance because you will realize that you are far more important than you had ever dared to dream. You will no longer make the mistake of confusing your identity in form with anything greater than it is. While in form, you will see yourself as a being of light in a universe of equal beings, all equally essential to the whole. Beyond form, in the other reality, you will experience the, ta the totality of yourself in full awareness of who you are. You are the presence of God. God is present on earth because of you. Once you are able to open up completely to the meaning of this truth, it will become the overriding reality of your informed experience. You will begin to play your part in the planetary symphony with ease and clarity. As soon as you begin to look outside yourself as individually defined, out into the world around you to see how you can make yourself useful, as soon as you begin to serve in the capacity you, re you were created to fulfill, you will begin to share in the peace and happiness of your Creator. You will experience a state of consciousness so superior to any you have ever experienced before that it will make your previous life seem but a dream. Now is the time to make yourself useful to the Lord. Bring your awareness into harmony with God's. Learn to see the world out of new eyes. Look at your place in time and culture with the awareness of all that we have been telling you. This in itself will alter the way that you function. Your perception of the greater reality will enable you to see many things that have been there right along, but that you had never noticed before, things that others around you still may not notice. As you begin seeing these things, one of the side effects will be that your survival ability will increase a hundredfold. When you actually see the kingdom of heaven in operation on earth, all that you require for survival will be, will be drawn to you like a magnet. Life will be simple and easy. Problems will fall away like dust from your eyes, and the glory of the new reality will begin to shine forth in all that you do. With great clarity and peace, you will do what needs to be done. Life will begin to work extraordinarily well. Thus will be the fruit of restoration, the fruit of your return. Already, the rivers run with life and the cities sparkle like diamonds for those with eyes to see. See with the eyes of God. Let his vision be your vision. See the new world unfold before you, even as the old falls away, like leaves falling from a tree in the autumn of the year. Reclaim your identity in Christ and inhabit the new world, even as it takes shape before your eyes. Do not focus on the world that is polarizing toward selfishness and fear. Do not pay attention to the old that is crumbling around you. What has been soon shall be no more. 
let the dead bury their dead, and concentrate solely on the building of the new. If you find yourself able to see more good in contemporary culture than ill, continue to work within that culture in whatever capacity you feel suited. Spread the light to all you meet. It is good that you feel this way. Your influence will accelerate the entrance of the new. On the other hand, if you find yourself unable to see much value in the quality of life that is being expressed in the world around you, quietly build the new in your heart. Your time of action will come, and you will know in the moment when it is time to venture forth. Use whatever conceptual images you need in your work, consciously and concisely, as a surgeon would use a scalpel. Keep the vision of the new always in your sights and love your opposition unconditionally. Slay your dragons with compassion. It is possible that aspects of the old will observe that the new works better and begin to align themselves with the incoming life patterns of their own accord. Other aspects of the old that cannot accept the necessary changes may just fall away without a great many words. In the end, it will not be those who shout the loudest who triumph, but those simple souls who, in trust, accept the inevitable and, and work quietly and honestly to root their lives in God's love. Withdraw your energies from informational exchange systems that serve only to draw attention to the destruction of the old. Withdraw the energy of your attention from any form of media that keeps you ever conscious of the death cries of exploitive and manipulative systems. Do not be concerned with global negativity, but look to yourself, to your children, to your families and communities. There you will find the best news of all, that the time has come and the planetary being of which you are a part is at long last beginning to awaken and throw off the blankets of history. There's another chapter called Islands of the Future. I'll read a part of it as I still have a little time. As you reorient toward the new way of being in the world, you will be drawn to centers where the vibrational atmosphere is more conducive to a healthy state of function. These centers will represent the focal points around which the organs of planetary being will form. They will be, in a sense, islands of the future in a sea of the past. Within their vibrational field, the new age will blossom and spread organically to cover the earth. These will be the first beachheads secured by the approaching forces, the points of entry through which the healing energies of transformation will be channeled. All of these centers will work together to prepare the human species for its collective awakening. Some of these centers will have a specific orientation and emphasis. Others will be more electric and universal, not electric, eclectic and universal. But all of those that are truly of the new will be united in the spirit of incoming life. In each of these centers, whatever the indigenous form happens to be, the presence of conscious life will provide an environment in which sincere individuals seeking to undergo the psychological process and participate in the work of the Lord can make whatever adjustments need to be made, becoming firmly grounded in the ways of the Spirit. Many such places exist at this time. Many more will arise during the remaining decades of this transitional period. By the time the next generation reaches maturity, there will be widespread network of these islands. It will be commonplace by this time for individuals to pass the whole of their existence within a framework of these communities. The coming age is not to be an extension of the individual attitude. During the process of transition, many will find that it helps to be around others who have made or are making the necessary vibrational adjustments. An environment of understanding enfoldment can greatly accelerate the process. The roles that each of you will be required to play in the days of planetary transformation are multiple 
and varied. In these times of preparation, you can help each other learn to play them without judgment or attachment. This will be a large part of your training in these centers. You will learn to take responsibility for your particular function without ego identification, to share individual resources with others as parts of a greater whole, and to surrender whatever behavioral patterns are no longer conducive to a harmonious flow of spirit. There will be a place for leadership within these centers, but primarily in the context of practical management. Such leadership will not constitute a spiritual hierarchy. Within the atmosphere provided by these centers, one must take complete responsibility for one's own awakening. Through living and working together, though living and working together will accelerate the process for each individual, no individual will rightly be in a position to arbitrarily dictate the way for another. True spiritual leaders will not try to hold you in subordinate patterns, but will pull you as quickly as they can to their own level and push you if you are capable of going beyond. On the other side of the psychological process, the greatest among you will, as Jesus taught, be the servants of all. It is these servants who will rightly occupy the necessary positions of practical leadership. Those who do not have the humility to accept this necessary authority in matters of day-to-day living will not be among the meek who inherit the earth. One of the first orders of business in the process of planetary awakening is the distribution of information. Those involved in New Age centers today are already engaged in this work. Their function is to receive the breath of life, translate it into the information that is required to transform existing social structures, distribute it accordingly. This will involve them with all facets of communication, not as observers, but as programmers and directors. Your communication systems have been waiting for this day. They were created for this moment. Do not shun the technology that is available. Though it has been abused in the past, in loving hands, it is capable of transforming the consciousness of your planet more quickly and efficiently than otherwise would be possible. These are tools for the hand of the Lord. Do not fear them, but love them and use them to spread the message of love to all who have not learned to tune to others more direct channels within themselves. I'm going to end it here. I think that's what I'm being, a channel to spread information. And uh, I love that I'm able to get these pictures of uh, light. And increasingly I become aware that this is an intelligence and that it's speaking to us. I can't read the messages, but I'm sure there are messages in light because light is information. Information is so important. Without it, if dialogue ever ends between opposing parties, no information can be distributed and then things can go so wrong. So, love your enemy. That's my main message for today. Love you all. This is the Dove Lady, over and out for now. Bye-bye.